The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. Happy Fed Day. All eyes on Chairman Powell. 2 p.m. Eastern Time, the announcement. 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the press conference to follow. We got markets this morning accelerating higher, basically back to where we were yesterday morning before you had a little bit of a sell-off. You get the S&Ps right now up by about 17 points, trading just above 4,500 at 4,506. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 58 points right now, trading 15,433, similar action. You get back all the losses of yesterday. You're just over the 2.30 p.m. Eastern time high in the NASDAQ at 15,433. Dow catching a bid this morning as well, up about a third of a percent, inching towards 35,000. We're at 34,942 in the Russell, positive by eight. Crude, a little bit of a reprieve from the highs of yesterday. Yesterday, I'm on the program, 9.30, you're hitting 92.50 in the price of light, sweet crude. And just like that, you give up $3 from the price of crude. You back this thing up to see the trend line. We were talking about a pretty decisive break out of that trend line. Maybe we finally get a little bit of a reprieve in the price of crude. We'll be talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad, as we do every Wednesday, coming up at 40 past the hour. We talk Forex, of course. We always talk commodities. Interested to see what Teddy has to say about the price of crude recently. You jump over to Gold Contract. Trading at 1953, basically flat right now on the session. You jump over to notes and bonds. That may be the intention today. And you talk about it, man. How about yields? We got the 10 year right now, 4.33%. You talk about the two year right now, sitting at 5.06%. Yields easing a bit. But boy, all eyes will be on Chairman Powell at 2 p.m. Eastern Time today and 2.30. The press conference to follow. Seems like the pause is what they're going to do. But as we all know, uh, a lot more at stake than just the, the decision at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Where's the dot plot? What are they thinking forward going? You're going to see data dependent, as everyone's saying, as they should be, right? Everything is going to be data dependent. We're not out of the woods yet, folks, okay? So keep that in mind as we go forward. No matter what Chairman Powell says, and it matters, uh, they are going to be data dependent. We are not out of the woods. We're still in a price range of consumer prices pushing what, three to 4% being kind on the inflation front? Yes, that can ease. But as long as we're pushing almost 4%, okay, it's data dependent. I heard the term yesterday, I was talking about it, is the fact that inflation cooling a transitory factor. Gotta love that word transitory, man, uh, to say the least. We jump over to the VIX this morning. VIX, trading at 1384, we spiked to 1488 yesterday, easing a bit as we come into Fed Day, but boy, we'll see where we go from there. Uh, and we'll see where we go in terms of the day. We got about 20 minutes till the opening bell, but we're gonna have four and a half hours of market trading from 9.30 till two o'clock where all eyes are just gonna be waiting for the chairman at 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, let's jump around. Where do we start? We start for the Fed, why not? Uh, focus will be on the dots that likely will show one more move this year. Again, that's going to be data dependent as well, but we're going to get a dot plot. And, you know, listening to a lot of talking heads, but I agree with the fact that you say, you know, Chairman Powell likes to say the dot plots don't mean anything, right? They're forward looking and everything can change going into the future. That's just an estimate right now of where we will be in the future, but that doesn't lock you into that, right? It's not as meaningful because the data is going to determine where we go in the future. With that said, if it was meaningless, they wouldn't put it out, okay? So we're gonna get a dot plot. Uh, we'll see where we go from there. They're set to pause is the deal. And we are at a rate right now of 5.25 to 5.5%. And there are your estimates, folks. If we don't get a pause, everybody's gonna freak out. We're gonna get a pause, okay? We are gonna get a pause, but what are they gonna say that comes with that pause? We will see where will they go from there. And uh, yeah, the forecast for interest rates, that's going to be the focus, the dot plot, uh, where they go from there. And you talk about forecasts, right? Whether you're talking about the federal funds rate, what we're looking at, 
they may project higher for longer rates as inflation persists. The Fed forecast may show faster growth and less unemployment in 2023. The growth rate has ticked up. The committee could raise its forecast for two, 2023 growth to about 2%, double its view from June. Look how fast things are moving, man. Remember June? June was like yesterday, folks. Uh, nonetheless, they may double the estimate for growth in 2023. Growth has picked up, so they're going to price that in. They may talk about unemployment. I mean, what, Amazon yesterday, 250,000 jobs. How's that going to hit unemployment when you got Amazon adding a quarter million jobs themselves? You have other companies as well. We got FedEx out with their numbers today, and let's jump over to FedEx. Wins over Wall Street with $6 billion in cuts, gains on UPS. Pulling down the numbers a bit. And let's jump over to it before we... Yeah, so you're looking at FedEx barely up this morning. Um, it's going to be interesting on the heels of the UPS in terms of where FedEx goes on those numbers. But nonetheless, we jump over to Instacart. Okay, now we were talking about this one yesterday, folks. I got my own anecdotal experience on Instacart. Okay, but I told you to be careful, folks. And I hope you were careful yesterday on this equity because if you bought the open, you paid the price dearly. This thing opened at $41. You got a brief spike for a period of 10 minutes, and then it traded lower for the entirety of the day. And you're talking about almost a 20 to 25% haircut on this equity. I think they priced the IPO at, what, 30 to $31. Let's see what we're talking about for, are they going to load? I was going to say what the market cap is. You're probably pushing about $10 billion. Maybe they don't have all the information in there yet just yet because they went public. Folks, when you're dealing with private equity money, Okay, and you got a company that at one time was valued at $40 billion. And then that private equity money decides to push that capital, that those equity shares out to the public at a valuation of $10 billion. Do you think they believe that that equity is going to go back to 20, 30, $40 billion in the near term? If they thought it was going back to 20, 30 or $40 billion in the near term, they wouldn't be pushing it out to the public at $10 billion. Okay, they're worried that everything's gonna evaporate. You got a lot of big money in these equities. Uh, the founder alone I was talking about, uh, reading today I should say, walks away with about $1.1 $1 billion. And he's out, he gave up his board seat, he's not the CEO anymore, uh, and he walks with $1.1 $1 billion. Meanwhile, the company's only worth $10 billion, it used to be worth $40 billion, and you just traded from almost 43 to a price tag of 31 dollars 54 this morning very little buying action throughout the day i'd be interested to see where this thing goes from here but it's common sense folks okay private equity is very smart money if they saw a move higher from a valuation of 10 billion dollars they wouldn't be pushing it out to the public at 10 billion dollars no there's a lot of fear in that room when you got the equity cut in their valuation by 75 percent from 40 billion down to 10 and i tell you as somebody that was a huge customer for Instacart. You see how if you lose one customer, the dramatic drop off that can ensue. I got a family of five in the house, right? And you know, you're spending easy 300 bucks on groceries a week. That's if you're going to the store, let alone what you're paying on Instacart, right? You're paying 300 bucks, that's 1200 bucks a month. That's almost what? $14,000 a year and overnight I disappeared because costs were too high and it was no longer worth it. Be careful, they got a lot of competition out there as well. Stay tuned folks, we're coming back to talk to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. S&P futures up by about 16 points. That's a third of a percent right now. You got the NASDAQ 100 up a third of a percent. You got the Dow up a third of a percent right now in the Russell, just over that level as we come into a pretty important Fed decision at 2 p.m. Eastern time press conference to follow to talk about some of the action. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time. Fast Market from the Schwab Network, aired right here on Tiger TV. Check it out. I'm sure today will be a good one. we got a lot to discuss. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, we have a lot to discuss, but really, if you think about it, we sit and we wait, right? Because we have a lot to discuss on what Jerome Powell is going to say at 2.30 Eastern today because, you know, we got some economic data out. We had UK CPI come in a little than expected. We have mortgage apps that were sharply higher than expected. But all things considered, I think we are waiting for 2.30 Eastern time for Jerome Powell to give us his thoughts on the overall fight against inflation, Tommy. I think that's what we're waiting for. And, you know, Kevin, it seems like the consensus, not seems like, the, the consensus out there is a pause. It would be a shock if we get anything other than that. So you fast forward to potentially the press conference at 2.30. Uh, they're looking for the dot plot. Maybe they're looking for potentially one more hike this year in the dot plot. Is there anything you're looking for in particular, Kevin, that could be a surprise, whether it's talking about uh, hawkish, um, dovish? What, what, how, do, how do you try and anticipate what you're looking for potentially? And I know that's the million, if not billion dollar question. Um, but as, an, as a trader with experience, which is why we love talking to you, is there anything that's on your mind, what you're looking for? Are you looking for surprises? What, what are you kind of anticipating, if anything, coming up from the chairman at 2.30? Well, I want to I know how Jerome Powell is going to, how does he navigate the headline inflation data because of crude oil that's coming in much stronger versus the core data, right? And how do he separate those two discussions in terms of fighting inflation? Because let's face it, there's nothing Jerome Powell and the Fed can do about crude oil prices, right? There's very little they can do about grain prices and food, things like that. They, I mean, all they can do, they have one tool, and that is to raise interest rates. So... I'm going to see how he talks about that. I want to see how he talks about the projections for inflation and rates into next year. Remember, the markets who I consider in my 
career in this business, a spoiled child. The markets, they'll want lower rates quicker than maybe Jerome Powell will want to do. And the mistakes of the past, stopping too early before inflation gets down to a reasonable level, I think is something he's got to talk about. So there's plenty. Remember, historically, if the Fed doesn't move, they wouldn't even be a press conference. So the new, more transparent Fed, Jerome Powell's got to sit up there and take and take questions, even though he's leaving interest rates unchanged, Tommy. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, man. I, I imagine he's going to have uh, many questions on the front you talked about, uh, along with where we go forward. I know the data is going to matter. I'm sure we're going to hear the phrase data dependent in some form. Uh, and we got about five hours until that press conference, man. As you said, we sit here and wait. What do you think about the VIX, Kevin, sitting at 1378? We were at 1488 yesterday, markets accelerating off of the lows. Uh, what do you think about that coming into a pretty important, volatile decision potentially from the Fed with the VIX under 14 as it's persisted pretty low recently in this market as it's traded higher? Yeah, I mean, all you got to do is look at what's happened to the S&P 500 over the last several weeks it's been pretty range bound right you can make a case that go back to june and we're at pretty close levels to where we were in june now we've gone up a little bit we've gone down a little bit but all things considered the market's been pretty flat since mid-june all right and so that and the lack of big percentage moves are going to take its toll on the vix going forward so i think that has more that when I look at the VIX and the average for the VIX since it became the S&P 500 is 15.39. So the fact that we're below there, yeah, it, 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 I think it is the product of a pretty range-bound environment right now, Tommy. Boy, you know, as you were talking about it, I just pulled the VIX up. I put it on a weekly chart on the Thinkorswim platform. I have it going back five years, Kevin, to encapsulate, you know, whether it was COVID, everything. We are at some low levels on this VIX, man. But as you said, we're inching higher. We got the S&Ps at 4,500 and change. You got the NASDAQ 100 at 15,400. All things considered, uh, pretty strong market. And, and as you were talking about it, too, I pulled it up on the daily. Yeah, we're right back to where we were three months ago in the S&P, middle of June. Pretty remarkable. With that in mind, Kevin, as you said, we're waiting for the Fed at 2. You guys are going to be talking at 12 Eastern time. Do you guys have any equities you're talking about today coming up on Fast Market, Kevin? Yeah, we'll keep ourselves busy with trading FedEx nice. in the in the first segment today. We'll trade Darden Restaurants, who has earnings okay. coming out but, uh, in the second segment. Like Foley will do a presentation on Darden Restaurants and it, the massive restaurant tour who owns, you know, several restaurants that we've all been to, like Olive Garden, like, uh, you know, Yard House, like, the, so Seasons 52, Anyway, uh, and then we'll look at KB Homes, the home builder, right? Home builder in such incredible, is interesting story to home builders right now, Tommy. So pretty good show today. Waiting for the Fed. We'll trade FedEx, uh, Darden Restaurants, and KB Homes. Three great equities, man, and they're all kind of in their own entity of that conversation. The home builders, as you mentioned, boy, that conversation. The home builders doing so well. I got KB Homes up there, up from twenty-five dollars last year in the lows, about to fifty-five dollars this year. Nobody is selling their houses, man, because they got low interest rates. So the home builders, uh, kind of the only game in town, uh, at least recently. Well, Kevin. I appreciate the time on a busy morning, as always. And uh, who knows where we're going to be tomorrow when I talk to you in 24 hours. But we'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today, Kevin. Have a great one. We'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, folks. Check it out. Fast Market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV every trading day. 12 till 1. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the outstanding team they have over there. Our man Randy Frederick was on there yesterday having a great conversation. They got a great lineup of guests, and I'm sure it'll be a good program, as always. We jump over to FedEx, which they'll be talking about. Uh, FedEx, with their numbers after the bell, there's a longer-term chart. COVID lows of about 100. You're up to 319.90. You back off to 145, and you see the acceleration, man. Sitting at about 250 bucks. You jump over to the Analyze tab in terms of the move they're looking for, about a $12 move priced in for their earnings after the bell today, $250 equity. So you're looking at almost a 5% move in either direction for FedEx shares as they'll be coming out after the bell today. And yeah, um, I imagine they're going to have a lot of questions to deal with, whether it's on the heels of the UPS deal 
one of the conversations I remember that I was reading about on the heels of that union deal for UPS. Now, <clears throat> UPS is unionized. FedEx deals with a lot of contractors. FedEx was already having a difficult time in terms of getting workers to facilitate everything, especially in those warehouses, okay? And it's because, number one, they're competing with UPS right out of the gate. But what I found so interesting when that UPS deal was getting done, right, is that they shifted to the FedEx deal. And it's going to make things even more difficult for FedEx to potentially procure those workers, especially in their warehouses. And then you shift to they're actually competing with themselves for workers because one of the conversations that the executives were having with FedEx was saying, hey, we got to be careful how much we pay our warehouse workers because we start paying them too well. And then the drivers are actually going to say, hey, man, these warehouse workers are doing so well. Maybe I'll go in the warehouse instead of being a driver. And then they'll have problems with the drivers. So they got a lot of issues. We find out after the bell. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't your portfolio away. can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year D-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the markets pairing the gains a bit. S&P pulls back slightly on the open right now. You got it up about 11 points, trading just above 4,500. NASDAQ 100, you're up by two tenths percent, 15,408. Dow in the positive as well. So FedEx with the earnings after the bell. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks this morning. Apple catches another bid. Be interesting. You know, the iPhone 15. So I have the iPhone 12, 12 Pro Max, I think. 
and rightfully so, there are very little differences when you talk about generational changes for the iPhone. When you go back like, you know, from the five to the six, you actually could tell a massive difference for the options that you could get on that phone, maybe the camera, um, the different features available. That is not the case so much anymore, but I will tell you that number one, excuse me, the camera gets better and better. And even though it's not as noticeable, once you go to two to three generations, it seems like there's an impetus maybe to say this might be a slight motivating factor. Very difficult on a generational basis, as in from the 14 to the 15, the 13 to the 14. But you go a few out and I find myself saying, you know, I got the 12. The battery is not as strong as it used to be. That is one thing that is a factor for sure. Uh, and I find myself saying, you know what, maybe I'll start taking a look at that 15. Maybe. Didn't really care for the 14. It wasn't quite there. Maybe I'll start taking a look at that 15. Nonetheless, Apple shares basically flat this morning. You jump over to Amazon. The news yesterday, 250,000 seasonal workers full-time and part-time. They trade lower by about $4. You're up a bit this morning by about three-tenths percent. Disney had the news yesterday, spending capital as well. You dive from 85 to 82. You're trading at about 82.30. Let's jump over to Instacart, see how they're trading this morning. Down 2.3% yet again, and folks, I'd be careful. As I said, man, the uh, that was one day of pain, and usually the pain does not end that quickly. When you trade from 43 bucks down to 34, I mean, if you got this thing on the IPO, are you holding it? No, I'm dumping that thing instantly, and that's probably what everybody did when this thing went IPO from 42, potentially down to 38. You got a lot of insiders in there. I'm not sure if they're held up or whatnot, but just the whole setup on this equity in terms of between the float that they were pushing out to the public, you had insiders that were scooping up a lot of that float to make sure that there was not that much supply in the market, probably indicative of the fact that they were worried about demand. And guess what? They're right. Be careful, folks, Instacart. And listen, I got the Instacart app on my phone. The other thing I'll tell you as well, okay, anecdotally, is that I had... I was being bombarded with notifications from Instacart of pretty phenomenal deals talking about $40 off your next grocery 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 order of $100. That's a phenomenal deal, okay? Now, keep in mind, you get a deal like that, you might not even be saving money though, okay? It might be free though. What they were doing is they were trying to pad the numbers as they come into that IPO, okay? The three months prior to it, right, they're making sure they're boosting revenue numbers. Even if the margins are shrinking a bit, they wanna make sure that that top line number is showing growth, that it's not gonna wane a bit. Uh, so be careful in this equity as you're off 3.8%, even from the close of action yesterday at $34. We jump over to FedEx ahead of their numbers, catching a lift, market ready for their numbers after the bell, up about 1% right now at 252.87. And let's jump some of the auto workers. So we talked about this one in the beginning of the week, talking about Potentially, this is going to be a slow roll, and it's interesting. So never have they struck at all three auto workers at the same time, right? You got Ford, GM, Stellantis, all of them on strike simultaneously. But what they're not doing is they're not on strike across the board. They've striked at, they've struck at three different plants, but already talking about, guess what? If we don't have another deal or potentially progress by Friday, we're talking about more plants. It's going to continue to roll is what's going to happen there. Uh, Either the big three get down to business and work with us to make progress in negotiation or more locals will be called on to stand up and go out on strike, okay? So it's interesting that they're going to keep pressing the pain. They're not all going to do it at once. They're going to keep pressing the pain. They're going to they're going to maintain a little bit of leverage, the auto workers. Now, where this gets interesting is that you could have some fractions because if you're still an employee that's working, right, imagine you're the employee that's on strike. So you're, you're an auto worker union member and your plants on strike but meanwhile other plants are still working those employees are still getting paid now you might be getting paid something by the union but you can see as these persist is that going to be fair are people going to think that's fair Are they going to be able to hold the line there's so much at stake man it's going to be interesting to see negotiations do not get much higher stake than this as we come into things uh the new deadline raises the stakes for talks between the three and you got 146,000 workers out there. And nonetheless, this is going to persist. We jump over to some of those equities and see how we're trading today. It's FedEx. Look at FedEx trading higher, man. Ford, basically flat right now. You jump over to GM, basically flat. What is Stellantis? STLA. They catch a bid up 2.5%. 
You put this thing on a daily, you see the volatility. Yeah, it's not loan the fundamentals. Uh, nonetheless, that's going to play out for some time. You get the S&Ps right now up about 10 points. We jump over to no Tim Bonds. Checking in on no Tim Bonds. And boy, you talk about it, right? Coming into a pretty important Fed decision. And we have the 10-year sitting at 4.33%. And how about the two-year, man? Sitting at 5 point. 0.7%, 5.07%, man. Now, I talked about it yesterday as well. There's a risk-free rate of return out there, folks, of above 5% right now, which is absolutely remarkable. When you look at where we are in this market at 4,500, you know, longer term, retirement, 401k, yeah, I got all my money basically um, in growth stocks, okay? And, and, you know, I'm young enough, I'm 43 years old, you don't have to be worried about it. But on a shorter term basis, depending on where you are, depending on what money you're talking about, okay? Let's say you're retired, and let's say you have a piece of your capital that is essential to life expenses, okay? What I encourage you to think about is, are you willing to take a haircut of 20% in this market? I'm not telling you it's gonna happen, okay? But are you willing to take a 20% haircut? Because guess what, folks? A 20% haircut, okay? is only talking about trading back to where this market was chopping around less than a year ago. If you don't think that can happen, then you're not pricing in the probabilities of events that could occur. A five-year ladder right now is at 5.09%, okay? So you have to think of the opportunity costs, okay? Now, this is going from active trading to retirement portfolio management, okay? And I am not a portfolio manager at all, so, Con consult a professional, to say the least. But what you want to think about is you're getting 5% a year. That's a 10% return over two years. That means over two years, you're getting the S&P approaching 5,000 risk-free, okay? So where you are on that retirement spectrum, think about that. Because a lot of people, I think, with where this market is right now, with where it's come from, with the gains that you have potentially in the S&P, are you comfortable taking a 20% haircut? That's only talking about going back to 3,600, folks, okay? You're only talking about giving up six months of gains, and boom, you're going to be down almost 15% in this market. Are you comfortable with that? If you are, then it's great. If you're able to hold that out in the long term, then yeah, keep some money in the market, man. The market is strong. Uh, AI technology, the margins that we may be able to add to some of these technology stocks could really give a get, give a lift. But boy, you talk about a five-year ladder right now is above 5%. And, you know, you add that, you're adding 450 points a year, man. You're adding big-time money on the S&P on a longer-term basis, risk-free. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back, talking to our man Teddy Kegstat, the Tiger Forex Report. He's got a webinar coming up next week as well. we'll be you right might back. think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit Direction 
Investments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures just chopping around where we kick things off. We'll be interested to see if this market actually does anything over the next four hours, waiting for that 2 p.m. Eastern time announcement, 2.30 press conference to follow. Right now, we're going to jump out of our, over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report. Check that out under the newsletter tab at TFNN. It comes out every Monday morning. Teddy's also got a webinar coming up one week from today, folks. Capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads with Teddy Kegstat. That's going to be coming up a week from today, 4 till 5 p.m. Eastern time. The cost is $97. It's not a recurring subscription, folks. It's a 60-minute webinar. It will be archived. I imagine we'll have a group a good group in there, just as we had for Teddy's last webinar, and I'm looking forward to hearing what he's going to be talking about. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you filling in for me for a couple days while I was gone, man. I was able to catch uh, some of those programs as I was over in Europe, man. I appreciate it, as always. Um, and let's jump into it, Teddy. you got a webinar coming up a week from today. If we can kick things off with the webinar, talking about calendar stock option spreads, capitalizing on time. If you could just give maybe the listeners a, a brief preview of what you'll be talking about next Wednesday. Sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to next Wednesday's webinar. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, the whole topic is going to be calendar spreads, and we're going to go through, you know, basically the decision tree on how you apply these trades. You know, what type of expirations you look for, and uh, the value of that type of uh, option trading strategy that it gives to both, you know, beginner and advanced traders, especially with market timing and and stuff like that. It's a w great way of really putting on a you know a trade that you know it's a calendar spread is something you're not trading on an intraday basis it's something you put on and you don't necessarily forget about it but you do have to have a lot of time that passes um, for the trade to manifest itself but it's a very easy strategy to apply um, it's definitely something that you can uh, work in with whether you're holding positions in stocks and that's what we go over too is that it's not just an option strategy to trade certain market directions or lack thereof uh, but also how you can incorporate that into your portfolio with stocks that you already have and you can kind of add a little you know it's you know people know about covered calls well that's a very simple strategy but it really doesn't make people very much money it's something they used to talk about years ago this is something that's totally different it's a way of adding a little bit of extra juice to your uh, portfolio while you're still maintaining a stock position as well which i thought when we were talking about this webinar um and you putting it together uh, I remember having that conversation with you, and, and that was the most intriguing myself. And I love options, man. Um, calendars, myself, I, I not that I struggle, but because of those, those two elements of things, whether you're buying a short term, selling a longer term, uh, I'm really looking forward to that hour myself, man, digging into that and finding out you know, what you're talking about. So I can't wait for next Wednesday. With that in mind, man, let's talk about the market. Always great we talked to you on Wednesday, so usually we talk to you on Fed Day. Today is a Fed Day. Uh, what do you think about this market? What are you looking for for action, if anything, from the chairman at 2 o'clock in the, in the press conference to follow? Well, I think short term leading up to the uh, the number at 2.15, uh, I think what you're really going to see is probably – 
a little bit of trend action for the next hour or so, and then it's going to probably tighten up as we get into the lunchtime hours and become pretty flatline, I would think, across the board in the S&Ps as well as the currencies. The dollar's been under pressure for a few days. You have a nice little move going on this morning, and I think that's because yields have retracted in both the 30-year and the 10-year, especially over the past few hours. So you're catching a nice bid in the euro-US dollar. Um, but overall, even the pound-US dollar, you know, and most of the European currencies, I would look at it as a corrective move right now. So dollar strength is not so much because of what's going on with the Fed. It's it's the, the trend is pretty stretched. You know, just if there was no Fed meeting, I think it would be pretty likely that we'd be having the bounce that we're having right now short term this week. There's nothing very radical. You know, except for especially when you look at the currencies, the ones that had the most extreme move over the last week or so is pretty much like the New Zealand and the Australian dollar. Those are the heaviest beaten up currencies. The yen hasn't really moved much. It's hanging below its highs. I think a lot of that has to do with they're waiting on our Fed decision because you have the Bank of Japan that also came out with some uh, speak last week. So definitely, I think we will see after today um, a lot of reaction because it'll be really interesting to see what Powell's uh, tone is and how that makes the BOJ react. And I think if t if he remains fairly hawkish, um, that you'll probably see a reaction from the Bank of Japan within the next week or so as well. Yeah, that yen chart is something, right, man? Pushing 147.72 right now from just 138 recently. And boy, it's been, you know, some pullbacks, but a pretty straight trip from that 127 low, man, with some decent pullbacks. But we almost got it all back from where we were at 151, mm -hmm. which is remarkable. Crude uh, is helping that as well. I'm sorry, say that again? I said crude is helping that as well. I mean, we what? pretty much have a set floor now about 70 to $75 in crude. I would be stunned if we get below that price any time in the next two years, really, really. Honestly, I think that's pretty much a floor. So we're looking at seeing it $100 plus, plus dollar oil within the next couple of months and definitely as we move into 2024. Yeah, you beat me to the question, man. When I was thinking about <clears throat> talking to you, crude is always in the forefront of the mind. We've had that discussion for some time. Uh, on a shorter term basis, and I love the longer term look, and I probably agree with you, man, because, you know, $70 crude in the context of where we are, in the context of prices for everything, um, you know, it's always interesting, Teddy. I was just in Europe, of course, when you're covering for me, and having the conversation with Europeans, man, they, they laugh at the notion that we're overpaying for crude when, boy, their costs of crude uh, are priced number one in a liter. And it's just just so much more expensive than what we're paying in general. But on a shorter term basis, let's say, you know, because we got shorter term traders out there, we got traders out there trading, whether it's crude, even on an intraday basis. Uh, what do you think of light sweet crude at like $90 right now? It's been quite a run from 78 bucks, let alone the run we had from $67 less than three months ago. Do you see some action here? You're looking for a plateau around 90. You're thinking maybe it tests that $84 high from August. What do you think of crude at $90 right now? I kind of like it where it's at right now. I think you could see a correction back to probably maybe around 80. I don't think you'll touch the $70 or any upper 70 area for a while. I think right now, especially unless you see a big pullback in yields. If that happens, if all of a sudden the Fed stops being hawkish and puts on not just a pause, but has a real dovish outlook for the next like somewhere in the next six months, I think you might see a, a short term correction. I mean, crude has had a nice run up over the past. Like, what is it uh, since September? end of august we were at 77 you're looking yeah. at a 13 dollar move which is really not necessarily demand driven it's more kind of event driven so once we have the demand factor and if we have to watch while supply goes you know we're, we're in the fall we're switching the refinery for the way we you know process crude in this country that always causes an uptick in oil as well so i think it's going to be hard to see the market get below 80 bucks a barrel and even if it does I would be in a buy break, buy break posture. I would be very careful selling into those lows. You know, I think nice. you're really long term and short term. It's going to be pushing back above 100. We got a question in the Tigers Den, Teddy. Great. Uh, talking about the China slowdown. Do you see? How do you see the China slowdown potentially impacting the U.S. dollar? Is the question. Do you got any insight into that? Um, well, actually, the, the, the China slowdown is, is kind of an interesting thing because of the way BRICS are starting to come into play. And I think that is, if you see oh, – the way I see it is like this. Inflation has come to the point where, you know, everyone's watching their, their, their pocketbook across America, you know. And I've been joking about, you know, little Joey getting screwed at Christmas this year. <laughs> it's going to happen, you know. And here's the thing is if little Joey doesn't get his G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip, well, where does that come from? It comes from China. That 
it means China's not making those GI Joes. You know, I mean, it's an, a simplified situation, but that's really expands into everything. And I think that's、yeah. going to give strength to the dollar in the short run. So on that, I love it, man. Teddy, I appreciate it as always. We look forward to talking next Wednesday, and I look forward to the options webinar next Wednesday as well, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, brother. Thanks, Tommy. Have a good one. Thanks, folks. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now. At tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at tfnn.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24/7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to, and you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years. Experience as a day trader, Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24/7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to tfnn.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's tfnn.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. It's been a fast hour, man. It's going to be a quick day as we approach 2 p.m. Eastern time. We got a man Basil Chapman coming up next. We got, of course, our man Larry Pesavento at 11. We got Fast Market from the Schwab Network Network with Kevin Hanks. They'll be talking about what FedEx. They're talking about Darden Restaurants in there as well.、Uh, and then we have our man Steve Rhodes coming up. We got my dad Tom O'Brien live programming throughout the day. And it's an important day, folks. S and P is holding up pretty well right now, right? I saw the sell-off yesterday. I said, "Oh, is this market going to get a little worried?" No, it's not worried, man. This market、uh, relentless right now, but we'll see. Today's an important day. Chairman Powell, he's sipping his coffee this morning, man. He's getting ready for the main event at 2:30. All eyes on the chairman. We'll see where we go from there. And yeah, let's check around to some of the fang stocks as we kick things off. Amazon shares up about eight tenths percent. They almost get it all back yet from yesterday. You're talking about Disney shares. Not the same story, man. Disney down again on the heels of them spending more capital. Sixty billion dollars, I think, was the number over ten years for their parks and cruises. As a longer-term investor in Disney, you should like that number, though, folks, because streaming's a battle. But Disney. 
they only battle with themselves when it comes to Disney World, man. There is only one Disney World. They're going to make sure that they keep that business going, uh, even if it means spending some capital over the next 10 years. We jump around to Microsoft shares this morning. Up about a tenth of a percent right now. Google shares down about two tenths percent. FedEx ahead of their earnings tonight, accelerating higher. FedEx up 1.3 percent at 253.27. We jump to notes and bonds, and you're just chopping around right now, sitting at about 109.13, a little bit higher price. But all things considered, right where we are, almost to the tick when I began the program at 109.13. So, folks, check out Teddy's webinar coming up next week. Uh, I talked about it in terms of we're talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. And this is one of the ones that I really got to wrap my head around, man. I understand it, okay, but just looking for the definition. If you don't understand it, that's what your profit loss looks like on a long calendar spread. You got two different expiration dates in terms of what you're playing in there. You can roll some of those options. So he's going to have plenty to talk about, man. You want to understand this methodology, get in there, sign up now, reserve your spot. It will be archived and I'm looking forward to it next week as well. Folks, stay tuned. It's Fed Day. Don't go away. We got Basil coming up next. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great one, folks.